I'm pretty sure this isn't the way it's supposed to go. <laughs> what the? There it go, Mike. Welcome back to Itinerary Eastern Europe, where I share with you my old standard definition travel videos, as well as interesting facts to go along with them. What are we doing? Okay, run. At the end of the last episode, we finally made it to Poland. And of course, long, dreary bus rides can make one restless and hungry. So our first order of business after checking into our hotel is to wander the dark streets in search of a pub. What time is it? Is everything closed? It's Whoa! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. These people did not take a leisurely stroll. However, after some unsuccessful attempts, Where? we end up stumbling across a sketchy looking van parked under a dark bridge. And wouldn't you know that they are open for business, offering up authentic Polish sausage. In what other country can you own a van with a suicide door like that? Slide it open and hit it with a sausage. The next morning, we begin exploring the city. Oh, well, it's not raining yet, bad. That's cool. Here's the main dragon, Prachow, as they said. A lot of shit going down around here, isn't there? Although there is evidence of human habitation dating back 50,000 years, it was in the 10th century that Krakow became a thriving settlement and center of trade. Today, it is a cultural and economic epicenter having been dubbed Poland's Silicon Valley due to its huge technology startup scene. The first thing we stumble across is a monument dedicated to the Battle of Grunwald, which the Polish are very proud of because it showcases Poland's victory against Germanic forces during the Middle Ages. However, this is a replica of the original, which was ironically destroyed by the Nazis during World War II. From there, we enter the main square, and it becomes immediately apparent that there is an unusual amount of pigeons everywhere. Come to find out, these aren't just ordinary pigeons. When Prince Heinrich IV Probus assumed the Polish throne in the 13th century, he greatly desired to unite all of the lands. He had one small problem, though. He was too broke to make it happen. So one day, a sorceress came to town and offered him assistance. She used her powers to turn the prince's warriors into pigeons. Once transformed, they flew upon St. Mary's Basilica and began pecking out little pebbles which turned into gold coins. The prince collected the gold and went to Rome to gain the Pope's support in obtaining the crown. Yet, on his way, he indulged in all types of vices and went broke all over again. Heinrich never did reach Rome, and he never returned to Krakow again either. To this day, his warriors still remain under the spell, waiting for their prince to return. Coincidentally, there is a hard rock cafe located next door to the Basilica. Unfortunately, we can't go in because it's under construction. Luckily, the gift shop is open. And of course, I add to my already vast collection. Shout out to those magical pigeons for this fateful encounter. Moving on, our next stop is Jagiellonian University, which is the oldest higher education institution in Poland and one of the oldest in Europe. Founded by Polish King Kazimir the Great, the institution managed to survive every stage of Poland's turbulent history. Famous alumni include Nicholas Copernicus and Pope John Paul II. This way, we're gonna run, wow. Oh, I am so problem? tiny. Next, we head up Wawel Hill to check out Wawel Royal Castle. This was once home to Polish kings when Krakow was the country's capital. How this castle got its name is somewhat of a mystery, but it is said that a long time ago, in a dank cave at the foot of the hill, lived the Wawel Dragon, a beast that struck fear into the community. Frightened for his people, King Krakus, for whom the city of Krakow is named after, decided to act upon the issue. He promised to give his scepter crown and daughter's hand to anyone brave enough to slay the dragon. Many valiant knights came from all over to vanquish the beast, but to no avail.
Then one day, a fellow by the name of Scuba offered his assistance. He had no weapons and no armor. Out of options, the king decided to trust him. The only thing the young man requested was the skin of a lamb and some sulfur. When the dragon awoke the next morning, it saw the lamb lying at the foot of the cave and immediately ate it. Then the beast's throat began to burn as a result of the sulfur hidden inside. It got so bad that the dragon began drinking from the town's river. It drank so much water that it exploded from overconsumption. At long last, the Leviathan was defeated and peace restored to the city. I hope you enjoyed that little story as well as the video itself. Join us next time as we visit Bishop's Palace and tour the most notorious concentration camp of World War II. Again, Dovi Zenya.